The apartment is located in the 20th district of Paris. It's called the Belleville area. This is a village-like area rich in diversity of people and buildings. It is a hilly place where you can catch some beautiful views of the Paris landscape. This is our apartment. My girlfriend Clementine and I live here. Originally, the apartment is about 24 square meters and together with the mezzanine, it's now a 31 square meters apartment. As Parisian prices are really high, we were looking for an apartment that was affordable. The apartment is located in a tiny and modest building of two floors, which was built in the end of the 19th century. When we first found the apartment, it was a tiny dark three rooms apartment. There were no toilets nor showers and the ceiling was quite low Everything was run down and dirty. We removed every wall, closet and ceiling from the space. Removing all of the ceiling gave us a lot more volume vertically. And because of that, we added a mezzanine to the apartment by making a compact furniture unit to include the bedroom, the bathroom, the walking wardrobe and all of our bookshelves and closets we added three skylights into the apartment to maximize the natural light into the space. Getting into the apartment, you're greeted by a generous double-story height space and the exposed old beams and lots of lights. Our main goal was to make this apartment the most sustainable and economical for us. We did most of the renovation by ourselves so we could save money and take good care of the details and also improve our building skills. We used a lot of French pine plywood. Not only is it economical but also very durable and aesthetically pleasing. We like the idea of simplicity, irregularity and imperfection. Almost all of our furniture are simple and meaningful things that we inherited or found in the street. For example, the closet handles are from my grandparents' kitchen that I took when they passed away and their flat was sold. Next to the main window in the apartment marks the beginning of the living space. We designed the wooden volume of the mezzanine, bathroom and wardrobe space that allows the living to extend to a more intimate space in front of the bookshelf. There are five identical 45 cm bookshelf sections centered around our old integrated sound system and two 60 cm doors we made ourselves. To leave maximum space in the living and kitchen, the mezzanine ladder is foldable and movable attached to a thin cream rail. By pulling the ladder, you get quite comfortable access to the mezzanine. It is a simple, warm, wooden space with a bed hidden behind the bookshelf. We built a wooden box with plywood to form a bed head that insulates us from the wall and allows us a place to put our books or alarm clock. We added a skylight to allow more natural light into the apartment and provide a little window to the skyscape. The bathroom is designed around a small window. It is a very small bathroom, but we wanted it to feel generous, so we chose to use white tiles, white tap and white shower head to reflect the light. To bring a sparkling element into this white room, we used a survival blanket as a shower curtain. We love the warm, shiny, golden reflections that it brings all over the space. During the construction, we found an old and broken sink, so we decided to use it and we really like its cracks and its timeless look. 
we also used an old mirror that belonged uh, to Clementine's grandparents. The walking wardrobe is a compact and efficient space. We created a small bench to sit on and take off our shoes. The walking wardrobe and the bathroom were also designed as a buffer space to filter noise from the neighboring apartments and the common spaces. The kitchen is the feature of the apartment. We wanted to have a large workspace to cook together. It has a cooktop, oven and fridge. We also kept the old cracked sink from the original apartment. Even though it's compact, we made sure it has a lot of storage below the kitchen bench. We kept the wall free from clutter and hanging cupboard and we designed this funny wooden boot shaped extractor hood. We also asked a ceramist friend to create the handles from the kitchen cabinets. We used a washable shiny paint as a splashback over three lines of white tiles, the same as we used in the bathroom. In the dining space, we have Clementine's grandfather's old workshop table where we can generously fit six people. Designing a small space is about choosing what's really meaningful for you. By choosing what's really important, you make these functions easy for everyday life. If you have a tiny space, it might mean that you have few pieces of furniture. So I like the idea of including them in the project so you can give them the space and place they deserve. As we live, knowing the important effects of climate change on our future city living, living in a small space can contribute many positive solutions. It is easier to heat or cool and to clean. It also needs less material to build and it helps to stop the urban spreading. As living in the city is also closer to amenities, it prevents the excessive use of cars and keeps the city centers active and lively. An ideal situation would be to combine tiny private livings and diverse bigger common spaces for shared facilities and activities in the same building or block and also lots of public spaces in the neighborhood we live in. Thanks for watching. To receive updates on our latest episodes, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com slash submissions.